have not been YouTubing very much, which I have not. Hello, welcome. I'm back in France in my Breton garret. Uh, it is almost 2023 and therefore it means it's time for some year-end wrap up, some favorite lists. I have a very hard time making favorite lists, as you know, as you might know. Um, I'm very maximalist, I'm very greedy, I hate to pick and choose, but here are 22 books, 11 nonfiction and 11 fiction slash poetry that I particularly liked uh, over the course of this year. It's not an exhaustive list, but here are not quite two dozen that I really adored. So, let's get going. Bibliosophie. Uh, first of all, let's do fiction and poetry. These aren't in any sort of order, um, just more or less in the order in which I read them, but they're not ranked or anything. First up is The Latinist by Mark Prince, which came out earlier this year. This is a sort of modern retelling of Daphne and Apollo. It takes place in Oxford in a classics department. It is, it is perfect for my nerdy little Latinist heart. Uh, in it, the Daphne-ish figure is a doctoral candidate who's just finishing up her uh, defense and dissertation. Uh, she works with a famous um, classicist and her mentor, and things start to get kind of crazy. It's about power differentials and power plays. It's about academia. Uh, it's not a book that I think is going to that rewired my DNA or anything, but I enjoyed it tremendously. If you're into uh, academia books, you know, dark academia type things, uh, it's very much in a thriller vein. I read it really quickly, I just inhaled it. Around this time last year, actually, just when it was coming out, um, yeah, I found it truly a romp. Then, The Hearing Trumpet by Lenora Carrington. Uh, so this is a backlist book. You have probably heard me talk about this book several times already on this channel. I discovered it in February. I discovered the writing of Carrington. I had only known her as a sort of visual artist and um, a component of the surrealist scene, uh, but I discovered her writing this year and promptly fell in love, especially with The Hearing Trumpet. This is a wild story in which uh, an elderly woman is sent to uh, an old lady's home. Hijinks ensue. It's deliriously funny, um, trenchant, interesting, sad sometimes, apocalyptic. Uh, I just adored it. And the language is hilarious and weird. The plot points are just... Plus, it's also a picture book because uh, it is illustrated by Carrington herself. Then we have The Death of the Heart by Elizabeth Bowen. This is another backlist. This is from 1938. Uh, this is about a coming of age and loss of innocence. Our main protagonist, whose name I've forgotten at this point, actually, and I didn't look it up again, but uh, is a uh, half-sister of a much more bourgeois man and his very bourgeois uh, wife in London. She comes to live with them after the death of her parents and really cannot integrate into their life. Uh, she's always unable to kind of deal with the bullshit of what upper class English life means and the, the hypocritical uh, lines of thinking and of talking especially, and it's really about her um, disaffection and disillusionment over the course of her time there. I loved it. I would love to reread it. <clears throat> Uh, a bunch of backlists in here, actually. Uh, then we've got The Door by Magda Zabo, uh, translated by Len Ricks. Uh, this is a book about um, a relationship between two women, essentially, and about the things that we think we know um, about others and what we don't, about also, to a certain extent, hypocrisy, about uh, what we owe each other. 
Also, to a certain extent, about bourgeoisie and intellectualism. Um, I also discovered Zabo for the first time this year after uh, wanting to read The Door. I also read Abigail and really loved it, um, and I want to continue reading more of her stuff. Uh, NYRB just came out, or is coming out, with a new translation of another one of her books, whose name I have forgotten, but I look forward to checking it out as well. Then we've got a translation that came out this year of a book that came out um, a couple of years ago, I think, originally in Italian, Strangers I Know by Claudia Durastanti. The translation is by Elizabeth Harris. This is a piece of autofiction, also very much about identity, uh, about the protagonist growing up and feeling like an outsider uh, in so many different ways, about code switching between different uh, classes, but also different languages, different um, countries uh, in Italy, in the United States, within Italy. Uh, there's a lot of talk about um, the way we talk, in fact, accents, regional accents versus um, sort of a generalized Italian. Uh, both of her parents are deaf, and so also communication uh, in terms of words versus not. Uh, this is very much based off of Dorostanti's real life, um, and I found it a lovely exploration of self and class and language and communication. It, the things that I just generally very much gravitate towards. Another very much um, selfhood, self-construction book, and another book in translation, is uh, Tomb of Sand by Jitanjali Shri, translated by Daisy Rockwell. Uh, this won the International Booker this year. Um, a matriarch of an Indian family loses her husband and in so doing loses most of her sense of self uh, and then starts to reconstruct it. Uh, this is very much about what it means to be a woman and a mother, mother-daughter relationships, um, partition, uh, aging, return to self. Um, yeah, it was really beautiful. It's a chunker, but it's it was really beautifully written. Next up is Toni Morrison. I decided to read as much of her novels as possible this year. I didn't get through all of them, but I got through, I think, six. I'll have to do a final tally. Uh, Tar Baby was new to me. I had already read a couple of her novels before, but not Tar Baby, and I knew nothing about it. I honestly enjoyed all of them, but I'm choosing this one because it was such a revelation to me. It takes place mainly uh, in the Caribbean um, between a white family and a black family. Uh, it is very much about good white people um, and about racial identity, uh, new black identity, uh, the assumption of a post-racial possibility of identity, black bourgeoisie, uh, intellectualism also, uh, trying to move up in the world as a black person, trying to create an identity that is beyond your uh, black upbringing and the ways in which that fails, the ways in which white people are fundamentally still going to see you as black, uh, the way that other black people are still going to end up seeing you as black, and the way that you yourself are going to decide or not. Sorry, I'm also hungry. I don't know if you can hear my uh, stomach churning. Uh, how you're going to decide to see yourself and the ways in which class and race uh, interact and country as well. How do uh, all of the characters are American and how their lives are different in the United States versus um, in the Caribbean and then to some extent uh, in Paris because our main protagonist is a young woman who is also who got her education uh, also in Paris. So uh, I really loved it. It's, it's in some t ways really a kind of comedy of manners and then also just really devastating and beautiful. Then we've got Boulder by Eva Baltazar, translated by Julia Sanchez. Uh, this is a shorty and I just adored it. Uh, this is about our 
main character, Boulder, nicknamed Boulder, uh, her relationship to another woman, um, and how that relationship changes uh, about maturing into different people, what each of them wants out of life, and how that completely changes their relationship to one another and to themselves. Uh, the writing is so gorgeous, I just absolutely adored this book, and I look forward to reading Permafrost, also by Balthazar, and also translated by um, Sanchez. Then another really short one, and another Carib Caribbean one, actually, uh, Lucy by Jamaica Kincaid. This was also my first Kincaid, and I'm definitely a fan of Kincaid, want to read more of her stuff. Um, Lucy is our main character. She is from the Caribbean. She moves to uh, New York and is living with a rich white family uh, and is coming of age. Uh, she already has a lot of personality when she comes to New York and a lot of sense of self, but that also kind of evolves. It's very much also about a commentary on race relations and and good white people and class uh not in a way that's not dissimilar to tar baby um it's just beautiful the writing is gorgeous um yeah i'm really glad i finally got into uh jamaica kincaid this year i've been mentioning a lot of backlist books but this one is fresh out of the oven and i just finished it a few days ago, actually. Uh, Billy Ray Belcourt's A Minor Chorus came out a few months ago, I think. Um, this is his first novel. It is very much auto-fictional. It is about an indigenous uh, grad student who decides to uh, pause his PhD studies to write a novel. And it basically feels like the novel that Billy Ray Belcourt would have written as that sort of grad student. It, in, it um, explores being indigenous, um, relationship to Canada as a whole, uh, queerness, trauma, the ingrained inherited trauma of indigeneity. Uh, I don't like it as much as especially A History of My Brief Body. I don't know what that banging is, by the way, uh, which is his essay collection, but it deals with very similar themes and with similarly gorgeous writing. Um, he's a poet and you can tell. I love the way that a lot of poets write prose and I love uh, the particular mixture in Belcourt of critical theory and poetics and prose. Uh, so I'm a big fan. It is maybe not my favorite of his books that I've read so far, but I still highly recommend it. And finally, some actual poetry, the one uh, poetry entry of my uh, non of my fiction, excuse me, slash poetry 11 books is a uh, posthumous collection which came out earlier this year of John Ashbery. Uh, it's called Parallel Movement of the Hands, Five Unfinished Longer Works. It says what it is on the tin. Uh, it is some longer works of Ashbery's. I love his voice as a poet and I really enjoyed uh, this collection as well, which also has uh, some good uh, introductions and forewords kind of to give context. It's a lovely piece of book. Okay, I definitely am prattling on too long as I tend to do. Let's move on to nonfiction, another 11 books. First up is Heavy, uh, an American memoir by Kiese Lehman. Uh, this is a series of essays about so many things, masculinity, race, uh, misogyny, um, eating disorders and bodies, academia, uh, words and an intellectual inner life. Um, this is my first uh, year reading Layman and I just fell in love with his voice as well. Um, and this was the first of his books that I read this year and really, really recommend it. It's just beautiful. Uh, next up is Sempre Susan, a memoir of Susan Sontag by Sigrid Nunez. Uh, this is 
her memoir of living with Susan Sontag for a relatively brief period of time while she was dating uh, Sontag's son and may, I think if memory serves a little bit afterwards as well. Uh, so it's sort of a view of Susan Sontag through Nunez's um, lens. It's about both of them. It's about what it means to write and think in some ways. Uh, it's a lovely short book about a very bizarre figure. Uh, next we've got Death 24 Times a Second, um, Stillness and the Moving Image by Laura Mulvey. If you don't know necessarily M Mulvey's name, you're almost certainly familiar with her concept. She coined uh, the concept of the male gaze. Uh, she's a film critic and feminist, um, art critic, uh, this is about film and specifically, as it says uh, in the title, really stillness and sometimes in death scenes, but how bodies are portrayed on film. Uh, she goes through a series of films. I found it to be a very interesting, if more academic, uh, collection of essays. Then some more art criticism. Look, hey, it's me. I love this shit. Uh, Funny Weather by Olivia Lang. Um, Art in an Emergency is the subtitle. This is a whole bunch of um, essays coming from a bunch of different publications. It's a huge collection of some really, really short uh, pieces about just all sorts of things. Visual artists, authors, um, just a really good compendium of um, Lang's writing about a bunch of different things. I really liked it. Uh, Notes of a Native Son by James Baldwin was a reread for me, but I hadn't read it in a long time and it's excellent. So some more uh, cultural and art analysis and criticism uh, mixed in with memoir to a certain extent. This is a fantastic collection. I love James Baldwin's voice. I particularly love his nonfiction, and I was really glad to uh, dip back into this one. Red Comet, The Short Life and Blazing Art of Sylvia Plath by Heather Clark is certainly the longest book I read this year. It's over a thousand pages. It is a biography of Plath, um, and it is a really meticulous and wonderful biography, um, which I highly recommend. It's not too sordid. I mean, it's difficult to read, of course, because it goes into details about a very sad life, uh, but it's a really good analysis of her work and not overly um, kind of hand-wringing about the difficulties of her life. Suppose a Sentence by Brian Dillon is a series of essays about one sentence at a time uh, from a bunch of different authors. The name comes from a Gertrude Stein piece, but he's also analyzing sentences by, well, Baldwin, for instance, and just a bunch of other people, and the particular workings of one sentence. So each sentence is the pretext for an essay about writing and about uh, that author's work, or just specifically the uh, machinations of the words in that particular sentence. And of course, I loved it. Limbo by Dan Fox uh, is a really short book about in between this. It's about purgatory and limbo uh, as a theological concept, but also in art, in life, about feeling in between chapters in your life. Um, and it, I found it a really interesting kind of long form essay. The Hard Crowd Essays 2002-2020 by Rachel Kushner is another series of essays, uh, a lot of um, kind of social critique and art criticism and analysis. Uh, I had started dipping into these, I think earlier this year or maybe at the end of last year and couldn't get into them and then really adored them once I got into them, so highly recommend it. Uh, Translating Myself and Others by Jhumpa Lahiri came out at the beginning of this year, or not even at the beginning, like mid-year, um, and this is, as it says, a book about 
writing and about translation. I talked about it in a video earlier this year about uh, books on books. Um, and again, it's something I absolutely adore. Uh, she talks about her relationship to both English and Italian, especially, and uh, also Latin, just her relationship to language, languages, learning languages, deepening language, how translating uh, changes your approach to languages that you already knew, etc. And finally, to round it off, another book that I mentioned in the same uh, video of books on books is How to Read Now by Elaine Castillo, which came out a couple of months ago. Um, and it is another series of essays. Most of these uh, nonfiction offerings are series of essays about art or writing um, and how we how we read, how we understand both actually, you know, literally reading uh, the written word, but also how we read uh, society and kind of culture in general, and often how we misread and willfully are taught to misread things, um, misinterpret, uh, and what we do or do not favor in how we read um, both books, but also kind of society at large. Really loved it. All right, that's my my shaggy dog story about some of my favorite books. Uh, I had a really good reading year. I'll talk about it maybe a bit more in another video. I'll, maybe I'll do another kind of overall wrap up video and uh, looking ahead at 2023 at some point soon. But yes, bye.